Physics paper question 1 given potential difference v equals 8 plus or minus 0.5 volt and current i equals 2 plus or minus 0.2 ampere the value of resistance r is now v equals 8 plus 0.5 i will be equal to 2 plus 0.2 so R absolute value of R will be equal to 8 divided by 2 which will be equal to 4. Now this V is equal to 8 plus or minus 0 0.5 and I is equal to 2 plus or minus 0 0.2. Now in order to calculate now the absolute value of R is 4 ohm we need to also calculate the error. So delta R by R will be equal to delta V by V plus delta I by I which will be equal to 0.5 divided by 8 plus 0.2 divided by 2 multiplied by 100 which equals 16.25 percent so your value of r would be equal to 4 plus or minus 16.25 percent question 2 the dimensions of emf in mks is now the dimension of ems EMF would be EMF E is L DI by DT. Okay. So, on using this formula, when you put down units, the dimensions for E will come out to be M L square T minus 2 divided by A T. So, which will be M L raised to 2 T raised to minus 2 q raised to minus 1. So your correct answer would be option D. Question 3. A particle moving along a straight line has a velocity v meters per second when it cleared a distance of y meter. These two are connected by the relation v equals root of 49 plus y. When its velocity is 1 meters per second its acceleration is. So v is equals to root of 49 plus y acceleration is equal to dv by dy multiplied by dy by dt which will be equal to v dy by v dv by dy basically so v dv by dy that is your acceleration so i will get 49 plus y raised to half multiplied by half 49 plus y the whole raised to half minus 1 which would give me the answer as half meters per second square so which is option D question 4 a fighter plane enters inside the enemy, ter enemy ter territory at time t equals 0 with velocity v0 equals to 250 meters per second and moves horizontally with constant acceleration a equals 20 meters per second square that is given in the figure an enemy tank at the border spots the plane and fires a shot at an angle of 60 degree with the horizontal and with the velocity u equals to 600 meters per second at what altitude h of the plane it can be hit by the shot now since the plane is being hit i'll say t will be equal to u cos theta minus v0 divided by a by 2 on substituting the values we get t equals to 600 multiplied by half minus 250 divided by 10 which will be equal to 5 seconds. So h would be equal to u sin theta multiplied by t minus half gt square which equals 600 root 3 by 2 multiplied by 5 minus half g would be 10 t square would be 25 so on solving this we will get height as 2473 meters which is option d question 5 a particle moving in a circle of radius 30 centimeter 
its linear speed is given by v equals to 2t where t is in second and v in meters per second find out its radial tangential acceleration at t equals to 3 seconds respectively now radius of the circle is given as 30 centimeter which will be 0 0.3 meters speed is given by v equals 2t radial acceleration ar is nothing but v square by r which is equal to 2t the whole square by 0 0.3 now at t equals 3 seconds i will have ar will be equal to 2 multiplied by 3 the whole square divided by 0 0.3 which will be 120 meters per second square so your ar is 120 meters per second square your tangential acceleration at would be equal to dv by dt so on differentiating 2t you will get 2 as your answer so your tangential acceleration will be 2 meters per second square radial acceleration is 120 meters per second square so your answer would be option c Question 6 Two bodies of masses M1 and M2 are connected by a light inextensible string which passes over a frictionless pulley. If the pulley is moving upward with uniform acceleration g then the tension in the string is. When the system accelerates upwards the effective value of acceleration due to gravity is given by g plus a which will be basically 2g that is acceleration since it is moving up a will be equal to g now t tension in the string is equal to 2 m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 multiplied by 2g which will be equal to 4 m1 m2 g divided by m1 plus m2 so your correct answer is Option C. Question 7. If a stone weighing 1 kg and sliding on ice with a velocity of 2 meters per second is stopped by friction in 10 seconds, the force of friction, assuming it to be constant, will be. Now the question says stone weighs 1 kg sliding on an ice with velocity. 2 meters per second is stopped by friction so initial velocity u is 2 meters per second whereas final velocity v is 0 time taken t is 10 second now acceleration would be equal to v minus u by t which will be equal to minus 0 0.2 meters per second square friction force F would be equal to MA. So on substituting the value we get minus 0 0.2 Newton. So the correct answer would be option B minus 0 0.2 Newton. Question 8. If W1, W2, W3 represent the work done in moving a particle from A to B along three different paths P1, P2 and P3 and 3. Paths 1, 2 and 3. In the gravitational field of a point mass m find the correct relation so the correct between w1 w2 and w3 so we are supposed to find the correct relation between w1 w2 w3 now gravitational force is a conservative force and work done against it is a point function that is it does not depend on the path since the work done does not depend on the path being followed, so whether the path is 1, 2 or 3, work done will be same. So your correct answer will be option B. W1 equals W2 equals W3. Question 9. An automobile engine develops 100 
kilowatt when rotating at a speed of 1800 revolutions per minute what torque does it deliver so in this case the automobile engine develops 100 kilowatt so and when it is rotating at a speed of 1800 revolutions per minute now omega is 2 pi n and n is given to us as 1800 revolutions per minute which you will convert it to seconds so it will be 1800 divided by 60 that will be 30 revolutions per second now omega which is 2 pi n will be 2 pi multiplied by 30 that will be 60 pi radians per second so the value of omega is 60 pi radians per second now i know that p equals torque multiplied by omega so torque will be equal to p divided by omega that is power so torque is power divided by angular velocity so power being 100 kilo so 100 into 10 days to 3 divided by 60 pi which on solving you will get 531 newton meter as your answer that is option c question 10 a body is rolling down an inclined plane if ke of rotation is 40 percent of ke in translatory state then the body is a so here the body is rolling down an inclined plane and they're saying kinetic energy of rotation is 40 percent of the kinetic energy of translation so in this case i know that half m v square k square by r square will be equal to 40 percent of half m v square that is root rolling body that is the rotational kinetic energy is 40 percent of the translatory kinetic energy from this i would get k square by r square will equals to 40 by 100 which is equal to 2 by 5 k square by r square being 2 by 5 means that the body is a solid sphere because k by r for a sphere is root of 2 by 5 so the body is basically a solid sphere which is option d question 11 venus looks brighter than other planets because it is heavier than other planets it has higher density than other planets it is closer to earth than other planets it has no atmosphere so the correct answer is option c it is because it is closer to earth than other planets question 12 the ratio of two specific heats of gas cp by cv for argon is 1.6 and for hydrogen is 1.4 adiabatic elasticity of argon at pressure p is e adiabatic elasticity of hydrogen will also be equal to e at the pressure so you have to find the pressure at which the adiabatic elasticity of hydrogen will be equal to e so adiabatic elasticity is given by gamma p now for argon adiabatic elasticity is 1.6 p gamma is basically cp by cv and since cp by cv value of argon is 1.6 area e of hydrogen would be equal to 1.4 p dash so as elasticity of hydrogen and argon are equal that is e argon and he hydrogen are equal so i can say 1.6 p equals to 1.4 p dash so from here i'll get p dash equals to 8 by 7 p that b will be your correct answer question 13 according to bernoulli's equation p by rho g plus h plus half v square by g equals to constant the terms a b and c are generally called respectively 
now the terms a b and c are called as pressure head gravitational head and velocity head so option c is your correct answer question 14 to what height should cylinder vessel be filled with a homogeneous liquid to make the force with which the liquid presses on the sides of the vessel equal to the force exerted by the liquid on the bottom of the vessel if it should be now here let h be the desirable height of liquid in cylinder for which force on the bottom and sides of the vessel is equal so force on the bottom is given by rho g h multiplied by pi r square force on the wall so this is force at the bottom force on the wall is given by rho g h by 2 multiplied by 2 pi r h now since both are equal i will get rho g pi h square r equal to rho g h pi r h so from this i would basically get r will be equal to h so the height when it is equal to the radius that is when force at the bottom is equals to force on the sides so your correct answer is option c question 15 when two ends of a rod wrapped with cotton are maintained at different temperatures and after same time every point on the rod attains a constant temperature then conduction of heat at different points of the rod stops because the temperature is not increasing b rod is bad conductor of heat c heat is being radiated from each point of the rod d each point of the rod is giving heat to its neighbor at the same rate at which it is receiving heat now here the correct answer would be option d that is each point on the rod is giving heat to its neighbor at the same rate at which it is receiving heat because the reason because there is steady heat flowing now through the rod so hence heat each point on the rod is giving heat to the neighbor at the same rate at which it, it is receiving question 16 an ideal gas expands in such a manner that its pressure and volume can be related by the equation pv square equals to constant during this process the gas is now since pv square equals to constant represents adiabatic equation so during the expansion of ideal gas internal energy of the gas decreases and temperature falls so the gas is being cooled question 17 when heat is given to a gas in in an isothermal change the result will be so in isothermal change the temperature remains constant hence delta u is equal to zero so delta q is equal to delta u plus delta w so since delta u is equal to zero i get delta q equal to delta w so the correct answer will be heat is given to the gas is used for external work that is option a question 18 one mole of monoatomic gas and three moles of diatomic gas are put together in a container the molar specific heat at constant volume is so here we are supposed to find the molar specific heat at constant volume ratio of specific heat for a monoatomic gas is 5 by 3 and for diatomic gas is 7 by 3 so ratio basically gamma 1 and gamma 2 will be equal to 5 by 3 and 7 by 3 for monoatomic and for diatomic gas now for we also know that n1 is equal to 1 n2 is equal to 2, 3 and n4 is equal to 5 
so n1 n2 and n1 is 1 that is n2 is 3 and n would be equal to 4 so n divided by gamma minus 1 will be equal to n1 divided by gamma 1 minus 1 plus n2 divided by gamma 2 minus 1 so in substituting a values of gamma 1 gamma 2 n1 n2 and n you will obtain the value of gamma so gamma from here will be obtained as 13 by 9 so once you obtain gamma cv multiplied by gamma minus 1 is equals to r so cv equals to r divided by gamma minus 1 so substituting these values you will get the value of cv equals to 18.9 7. So your correct answer is option A, 18.7. Question 19. The total energy of a simple harmonic oscillator is proportional to. Now, here the correct answer is option D. So the total energy of a simple harmonic oscillator is proportional to square of its amplitude. Basically, how do I get this? It is because E equals half m omega square a square. So, it is proportional to square of the amplitude. That is option D. Question 20. A simple pendulum is suspended from the ceiling of a lift. When the lift is at rest, its time period is T. With what acceleration should the lift be accelerated upwards? in order to reduce its time period to t by 2 g is the acceleration due to gravity time period of a simple pendulum is given by t equals 2 pi root of l by g now when the lift is moving up with an acceleration a then the time period becomes t dash equals to 2 pi root of l by g plus a now since it is given t dash is equal to t by 2 so I will get pi root of L by G. So T dash will be equal to pi root of L by G. So from here I can say that basically equating both these sides. So I get 2 pi root of L G plus A equal to pi root of L by G. I will get the value of acceleration equals to 3g. So A will be equal to 3g. So your correct answer would be option B. Question 21. An open organ pipe of length per vibration length vibrates in its fundamental mode. The pressure vibration is maximum. So we have to identify where the pressure max, uh, vibration is maximum. Now the first normal mode of vibration is called as the fundamental mode. Now for the fundamental mode, your L will be equal to lambda 1 by 2. Since the pressure vibration is maximum at node, okay, hence the pressure variation is maximum at x equals so here it says that the organ pipe vibrates in fundamental mode so in case of a fundamental mode I have this is how the uh, wave looks like now no, the pressure is maximum that is pressure variation is maximum at the node which is basically at a distance of L by so your pressure variation is maximum at a distance half inside the ends so that will be option B question 22 a capacitor is charged by a battery and the energy stored is U the battery is now removed and the separation distance between the plate is doubled the energy stored now is now since the battery is removed and the 
distance between the plate is doubled we have to find out what is the energy stored now energy is directly proportional to the distance between the plates so if distance between the plate is doubled the energy will also be doubled so your correct answer would be 2u that is option c so correct answer would be 2u that is option c question 23 The charge on two identical metallic balls are plus forty mu and minus ten micro coulomb, respectively, and they are separated at two meters. How much and nature of force will act between them? So here, according to Coulomb's law, F is equal to one upon four pi epsilon zero q one q two by r square. So I know the two charges. Substitute the value. So I get nine into ten raised to nine multiplied by forty into ten raised to minus six multiplied by ten into ten raised to minus six divided by two square. So on solving this, you get minus zero point nine newton as your answer. So since F is negative, it means it's an attractive force. So your value is zero point nine attractive. That is option D. Question twenty four. n small drops of same size are charged to v volt each if they collide to form a single large drop then its potential will be now 4 by 3 pi r cube equals to n into 4 by 3 pi small r cube that is basically small drops are combining to form a big drop so n small drops are combining to form a big drop now here i can say that r cube is equals to n small r cube so your capital r will be equal to cube root of n multiplied by small r so your new potential v dash will be equal to n cube by 4 pi epsilon 0 r which will give you as n raised to 2 by 3 v so v dash Will be equal to n raised to two by three v. So the correct answer would be option D. Question twenty five. If in the circuit power dissipation is one fifty watt watts, then the value of R is. Now power is given by v square by R equivalent, which is given as one fifty. Now your V is given as 15 volts, so 15 divided by now. What is the equivalent resistance, which is basically the parallel combination of R and 2? So that will be 2R divided by R plus 2, which is equal to 150. So basically, 15 square divided by 2R by R plus 2 is equal to 150. On solving this, we will get 225 multiplied by R plus 2 divided by 2R is equals to 150. So your value of R would be equal to 450 divided by 75, which will be 6 ohms. So your correct answer is option B. Question 26. Five resistors of given values are connected together as shown in the figure. The current in the arm BD, so the arm BD is basically this arm, that is the central arm, will be. Now there are five resistors connected here. Now if you see the four resistors that are forming the quadrilateral here are all having the same value. So basically this forms a balanced Wheatstone bridge, and because this is a balanced bridge, the current flowing through this branch, that is the central branch connecting BD. Will be zero. So question twenty six. The answer would be zero. Question twenty seven. How many coulombs of electric charge must must pass through acid diluted water in order to release twenty two point four liter of hydrogen at NTP? Now, at NTP, eleven point two liters of hydrogen is liberated. By passing 
96500 coulomb of charge 22.4 liters of hydrogen will be liberated when i pass x liters of charge which is basically your x would be 96500 multiplied by 2 so which will be equal to 193000 coulombs so your correct answer is option b question 28 A rectangular coil 20 cm by 20 cm has 100 turns and carries a current of 1 ampere. It is placed in a uniform magnetic field B equal to 0.5 tesla. With the direction of magnetic field parallel to the plane of the coil, the magnitude of the torque required to hold the coil in this position is Now here you need to find the value of torque. so torque equals n b i a here all the values are given to me n is given to as 100 b is given to you as 0.5 i is 1 ampere and a is 400 into 10 raised to minus 4 so on solving this you get answer as 2 newton meter so option c is your correct answer question 29 The relation between B H and I in SI unit is so. Which of the four option represents the relation? Your correct answer would be option A. That is B is equal to mu zero H plus I. Question thirty. When a ferromagnetic material is heated to the temperature above its Curie point, the material behaves like a paramagnet. So when a ferromagnetic material is heated beyond the curie point it gets behaves like a paramagnetic material that is option d is your correct answer question 31 as shown in the figure p and q are coaxial conducting loops separated by some distance when the switch s is closed a clockwise current ip flows in p and an induced current iq flows in q the switch remains closed for a long time when s is opened a current iq2 flows in q then the direction of iq1 and iq2 are so as someone who sitting here how would that person see the direction of iq1 and iq2 so when the switch s is closed magnetic field lines passing through q increases in the direction from right to the left so the magnetic field lines the direction increases from right to left So according to Lenz law induced current in Q that is IQ1 will flow in such a direction so that the magnetic field lines due to IQ1 passes from left to right through Q this is possible when IQ1 flows in anti clockwise direction so with respect to E when IQ1 flows in anti clockwise direction that is when it will oppose the magnetic field that is producing it so for e iq1 is in anti clockwise direction opposite is the case when s is open so when s is open iq2 will be in clockwise direction with respect to e so iq1 will be anti clockwise and iq2 will be clockwise so your correct answer would be option d question 32 a uniformly wound solenoid coil of self conductance 1.8 into 10 raised to minus 4 henry and resistance 6 ohm is broken up into two identical coils these identical coils are then connected in parallel across a 12 volt battery of negligible resistance the time constant of the current in the circuit and steady state current through battery is 
so we have to find the time constant and the steady state current now it says the solenoid had a self inductance of 1.8 multiplied by 10 raised to minus 4 henry and resistance of 6 ohm is broken into two identical coils okay so and they are now the two identical coils connected in parallel so the resultant inductance would be equal to l by 2 that is inductance in parallel would be equal to l by 2 so since the inductance is given to as 1.8 multiplied by 10 raised to minus 4 your l parallel would be 0.9 multiplied by 10 raised to minus 4 henry now here inductance of each part is given now since the initial inductance was 1.8 inductance and that is broken inductance of each part will be half that is 0.9 and lp will be basically your original l divided by 4 because now they are also connected in parallel so first this gets half that is 0.9 and then because of the parallel combination the resultant would be halved again so your lp will be 0.45 multiplied by 10 raised to minus 4 henry resistance of each part would be 6 by 2 that is 3 ohm and now since the resistor is also connected in parallel so the resultant resistance in parallel would be 3 by 2 ohm so the time constant will be equal to lp by rp which will give me as 8 amperes as the answer so your time constant of the circuit that is your correct option here would be option a 3 into 10 raised to minus 5 and 8 amperes Question thirty three: A resistor and a capacitor are connected in series with an AC source. If the potential drop across the capacitor is five volt and that across the resistor is twelve volt, then the applied voltage is. Now the resistor and capacitor are connected in series. V R is twelve volt. V C is five volt. So your V would be equal to root of V R square plus V C square, which on solving you will get the answer as 13 volt. So your V would be equal to 13 volt. So your correct answer would be option A, 13 volt. Question 34: The temperature variation in the region of stratosphere lies from. now that would be your option b as the correct answer that is 222 280 so your option b is the correct answer over here question 35 the graph shows variation of v with change in u for a mirror points plotted above the point p on the curve are for values of v so we have to find Point plotted above the point P on the curve are the values of V when smaller than f, smaller than 2f, larger than 2f, or larger than f. So basically, that can be calculated as at P, we know V is equals to U, which happens only when U is equals to f at another point q on the graph above p that is probably somewhere here v is greater than 2f it is so your correct answer here would be option c larger than 2f question 36 in a given direction the intensity of the scattered light by a scattering substance for two beams of light are in the ratio 256 is to 
the ratio of the frequency of the first beam to the frequency of the second beam is now for achromatic combination oh according to rayleigh uh, scattering formula intensity of scattered light l is proportional to 1 by lambda raised to 4 which is also proportional to proportional to f raised to 4 so f1 by f2 will be equal to l1 by l2 raised to 1 minus 1 by 4 so basically l1 l2 here are 256 divided by 81 raised to minus 1 by 4 which will be equal to 4 by 3 so the correct answer being option d question 36 an achromatic prism is made by crown glass prism for which ac equals to 19 degree and fin glass prism af is equal to 6 degree if mu v that is basically equal to 1.5 and mu v with respect to f is equal to 1.66 then the resultant deviation for red colored ray will be equal to now for achromatic combination omega c is equal to minus omega f so mu v minus mu r a the whole c is equal to minus mu v minus mu r a the whole f so which will give me mu r a the whole c plus mu r a the whole f equal to mu v a the whole c plus mu c a the whole f which equals 1.5 multiplied by 19 plus 6 multiplied by 1.66 which is equal to 38.5 resultant delta will be equal to mu r minus 1 a the whole c plus mu r minus 1 a the whole f so on solving this you will get the answer as 13.5 degrees the correct answer would be option d question 38 a radio transmitter operates at a frequency of 880 kilohertz and a power of 10 kilowatt the number of photons emitted per second r so number of photons emitted per second r given as p by h nu so which will be equal to 10 multiplied by 10 raised to 3 that's the power h is 6.6 .6 multiplied by 10 raised to minus 34 and your frequency is given as 880 multiplied by 10 raised to 3 hertz and solving this you'll get the answer as 1.72 multiplied by 10 raised to 31 so correct answer would be option a 39 if f1 f2 and f3 are the frequencies of corresponding k alpha k beta and l alpha x rays of an element then for k alpha emission transition is from l shell to k shell for k beta emission transition is from m shell to k shell and l alpha emission the transition is from m shell to l shell so e m minus e k is equal to e m minus e l is equal to e l minus e k so i will get h f 2 is equal to h f 3 is plus h f 1 so basically it will give me f 2 is equal to f 1 plus f 3 so that is c is your correct answer Question 40. What is the radius of iodine atom? Atomic number 53, mass number 126. N is equal to 5. Rn is equal to 0 0.53 multiplied by 10 raised to minus 10. 
n square by z substitute the values you'll get the answer as 2.5 multiplied by 10 raised to minus 11 meters that is option a 41 a gamma ray photon creates an electron positron pair if the rest mass energy of an electron is 0.5 MeV and the total Ke of the electron positron pair is 0.78 MeV, then the energy of the gamma ray photon must be. Energy of gamma ray photon is given by 0.5 plus 0.5 plus 0.78, which will be equal to 1.78 MeV. That is rest mass energy of electron, total Ke of electron positron pair and rest mass energy of the positron so the correct answer is option b question 42 to determine the half life of a radioactive element a student plots graph of ln mod dn by dt versus t here dn by dt is the rate of radioactive decay at time t if the number of radioactive nuclei of this element decreases by a factor of p after 4.16 year, the value of p is. Now here, dn by dt equals activity of the radioactive substance. which is equal to lambda n which is equal to lambda n0 e raised to minus lambda t taking log on both sides you get ln dn by dt equals to ln lambda n0 minus lambda t hence ln dn by dt versus t graph is a straight line with a slope of minus lambda from the graph we can see that lambda is equal to half that is 0 0.5 per year now applying the equation n equals to n0 e raised to minus lambda t n0 e raised to minus lambda being 0.5 t being 1.5 4.16 so I'll get 0 0.125 n 0 so hence the answer so that is basically n 0 by 8 so your correct answer would be value of p is 8 that is option a question 43 the laptops, PC, modern electronic watches and calculators use the following for display. Liquid crystals, that is option C is the correct answer. Mean optical power launched into an 8 km fiber is 120 microwatt and mean output power is 4 microwatt. Then the overall attenuation is log of 30 is given as 1.477. So attenuation is given as 10 log of 120 by 4 which is 10 log 30 so log 30 is 1.477 so your answer will be 14.77 db that is option a question 45 basically a communicator system is a transmitter a receiver messenger or none of these so Communication system is basically acts like a messenger which includes a transmitter and a receiver. So, your correct answer will be option C, messenger.